spring cleaning and with your spring cleaning while we're at home. And we hope that everyone is staying safe and we can't wait to see you all soon. Now we'll turn it over to our county fact agent. So I am Becca Stackhouse and I am the Chris County facts agent. So I am the facts agent in Chris County. And so I do a lot of work with Mary on programming that happens on a regular basis. Um, so since we can't be in person right now, we have switched some of our programming over to a virtual platform. So you can interact with us in the comments. You can um, talk to us via that way, those kinds of things. Uh, and then there are two different surveys. There's going to be a survey for the evaluation of the program that is post the link I will post in the description, but it's also posted on the event page for the green cleaning for tonight, which is attached to the UGA Extension Crisp County Facebook page. And then there's also another evaluation that's just a general one that will kind of just give us some feedback on how you thought the program went. Uh, so in Chris County, I cover several different topic areas, uh, and healthy houses is one of them. And so extension is one of those things that brings you research-based information, and we are in a different way that we deliver that right now just because of all the virus and everything going on. And so that means that the three of us that are with you tonight, we are actually in very we're pretty far apart. There's probably what two, three hours between each of our counties. And so doing it this way, you kind of get three different perspectives and three different teachings. And so we're all three going to give you different areas. If you haven't yet, there is a bingo board that the pictures are on the event page for. And if you want to interact and do the bingo, and then if you email me or put the picture in the completed comment, then you'll get a prize in the mail. Um, but you've got to complete it and give me your information and you're looking for the words throughout our presentation. Um, and so that is who I am. I'll let the other two introduce themselves and then Ashley is going to get us started. Okay. Thank you, Becca. So my name is Ashley Childs and I'm the family consumer science extension agent in Thomas County. So we had a little bit of bad weather today, um, as I'm sure most of you did too. So I'm hoping everyone's safe and well. Um, I love giving this presentation. It's actually not within my necessary plan of work. Um, I deal a lot in Thomas County more with nutrition and chronic disease prevention. However, um, healthy homes is part of a healthy lifestyle in general. So this is a fun presentation. Super excited that Becca um, has invited me to present it here with our teammates today. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And I'll turn it over to Keyshawn and let her introduce herself. Good evening, and thank you so much. Um, thank you for inviting me. I am in Bibb County, Georgia, and the weather is starting to get a little worse here. So if I cut out on you, that is because uh, our technology did not hold up. I also love doing green cleaning, and I've been invited to actually demo the cleaning products. I'm a mom of three, and I'm married, so my house is a circus now. So I'm constantly cleaning, and this saves a lot of money, and it's also healthy. I'm still suffering from allergies when it's not raining, so this is very good for my allergies as far as not having to, um, to have chemicals in, uh, hazardous chemicals in our household. Okay, well, I'll get us started then. So, thank you for joining us today um, in our workshop on green cleaning. You'll learn more about indoor air pollutants. We're going to talk about making your home healthier, reducing potential hazards in your home, and saving money by making green cleaning products. And who doesn't want to save money? This topic is especially pertinent right now in the times that we're in with coronavirus with that it's a little difficult maybe to find some cleaning products um, that you would normally find in the grocery stores or in your local neighborhood store. Um, so today we're going to talk about why do we even care about green cleaning? Why do we want healthy housing? Why green? So we just got to celebrate Earth Day yesterday. So we will talk a little bit about um, the impact that it has on the environment, um, but especially the impact that it has on our health as individuals. So we spend most of our time indoors, more so now than ever. So the indoor air that we breathe becomes an important concern. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, studies show several of 
levels of several common organic pollutants to be two to five times higher inside the homes, which again is a little scary given that we're spending so much time indoors right now. Many of these pollutants do come from volatile organic compounds or VOCs as we'll refer to them during the presentation that are found in a variety of products inside your home, including your household cleaning products. Health effects may include eye, nose, and throat irritation, potentially headaches, loss of coordination and nausea, or damage to your liver, kidney, and central nervous system. Some organics can cause cancer in animals, and some are suspected or known to cause cancer in humans as well. Persistent organic pollutants, or POPs, or POPs, are toxic chemicals that adversely affect human health and environment around the world. They can actually be transported by wind and water. So most POPs generated in one country can and do affect people and wildlife far from where they're used and released. They can persist for long periods of time in the environment and can accumulate and pass from one species to the next through the food chain. So many of these POPs are, were widely used during the boom in industrial production after World War II, when thousands of synthetic chemicals were introduced into commercial use. Some of these chemicals are beneficial in pest and disease control, crop production and industry. However, they may have negative impacts on human health and the environment. In people, reproductive, developmental, behavioral, neurologic, endocrine, and immunologic adverse health effects have been linked to these POPs. People are mainly exposed to POPs through contaminated foods, but less common exposure routes include drinking contaminated water and direct contact with the chemicals. So VOCs, those volatile organic compounds, are gases that are emitted from some solids and liquids. VOC concentrations can be up to 10 times higher indoors than outdoors. They're emitted from a broad range of products, including household products, both commercial and homemade. So if you see here in the image, you can see some examples of where you might find um, these VOCs and where they can come from. So your gas range, mothballs, or fresh dry cleaning in your closet, your closet foam padding in your couch. Um, if you look in all levels of your home, in your garage, in your basement, in your attic potentially, volatile organic compounds are everywhere within the home. So again, these concentrations can be up to 10 times higher indoors than outdoors. And again, especially right now, we're spending a lot of time indoors. Okay, next slide. Becca, I feel like you've a slide for me, thanks. Okay, so some of our concerns are higher concentrations of some VOCs leading to respiratory problems, especially among children. So again, with this type of coronavirus, we've heard a lot about respiratory illnesses, respiratory issues. And again, being, in being inside for longer periods of time with those higher exposures can be risky. Um, so household products are among the top five substances that result in calls to the U.S. Poison Control Centers. And Becca is going to share with us a little bit later about some poison lookalikes and why they could be potentially hazardous to children, especially in the home. So studies are ongoing to assess how chemicals contribute to chronic respiratory problems, allergic reactions, and headaches. Indoor pollutants can be reduced by limiting the number of chemicals used indoors. Asthma attacks. If you or a loved one, one of your children or family member has asthma, research has shown that the more volatile organic compounds in the house, the more reports of asthma. The VOC most concerned with asthma is one called benzene. So the benzene in indoor air comes from products that contain benzene, such as glues, paints, furniture wax, and detergent. So if you've never taken the opportunity to look what all is actually in the products that you're using, such as those paints, glues, furniture wax, and even your detergents, now's a good time to do so. And again, if your child has asthma, look and see if any of those products contain benzene. And that may be a contributing factor. Um, so Anytime that children are exposed or anyone is exposed, that exposed means that it's ingested, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin, eyes, etc. meaning they have touched it in some way, um, have gotten it in their eyes. In 2016, there were 11,528 reports of children five years of age and under exposed 
to single load liquid laundry packets. So for whatever reason, um, this was a thing in the news that people were doing this Tide Pod challenge and were actually eating Tide Pods. Um, and when people saw this, again, it's an issue because if you've ever seen a Tide Pod before, they actually look like they're brightly colored. They're in the shape of like a gel candy. So they could absolutely be mistreated by a child who doesn't know the difference um, as a piece of candy or something that you can eat. So you're, some children who have gotten the product in their mouths have had excessive vomiting, wheezing, and gasping. Some get very sleepy. Some have had breathing problems serious enough to need a ventilator to help them breathe. There have also been reports of corneal abrasions, so scratches to the eyes when the detergent gets into a child's eyes. Okay, Becca, if you can advance to the next slide for me. All right, so some green tips that we're gonna look at today are just some, some tips to improve your indoor environment, to help you save money, and also to help conserve natural resources. So we're going to go through three steps with you today. So reducing your impact on the environment, simplifying your cleaning routine, and also saving money. Okay, next slide. All right. So our, oops, sorry, Becca. I jumped ahead on you. We'll go back to green tip one. Thanks. Okay. All right, so there are many reasons to replace your current cleaning products with healthier alternatives. One major reason being for health concerns. So you or a member of your family may have respiratory problems, allergies or asthma that can be aggravated by the use of cleaning products. I know growing up and still now, if someone sprays too much of a cleaning product in a closed, confined space, my allergies go crazy. So Reducing the number of cleaners that you use in your home can help improve the home environment as a whole. You may be concerned about the environment and conserving natural resources. Again, Earth Day was yesterday. We've gotten some great social media messages about that. Unfortunately, we are a wasteful society and we toss many things that could be reused and we often overuse chemicals and cleaners in our homes without realizing it. Okay, now I can switch to the next slide, Becca. So green tip number two is to simplify. So simplifying your life, simplifying your cleaning routine, and also decluttering your cleaning cabinet. So make cleaning easier for you. It shouldn't necessarily have to be a chore and something that you absolutely dread doing. You don't have to buy specialized products for every room in your house. So if you go to any grocery store and you look at the cleaning products aisle, there is an abundance of cleaning products that are available for you. So from all purpose cleaners, which essentially would be for use for anything, but you've also got bathroom cleaners. You've got bathroom tile cleaners. You've got a shower cleaner. You've got a toilet cleaner. You've got a bathroom sink cleaner, kitchen cleaner, kitchen sink cleaner, stove cleaner, oven cleaner, and the list goes on and on. So those can really clutter up a cabinet. And space is very important and kind of hard to come by in your home. Um, so the cleaner that you use in your bathroom can most likely also be used in your kitchen. Just use one multi-purpose product, so an all-purpose cleaner, to clean your home. This helps to reduce costs for you and also chemicals that are exposed to others or others are exposed to in your home, as long as you focus on the basic ingredients. So we're gonna examine what is in cleaning products. So you're gonna walk away from here knowing what those basic ingredients mean, and you can know what to look for. So our basic cleaning ingredients that we're gonna talk about today are abrasives, alkalis, acids, surfactants, and disinfectants. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. So first off, our abrasive cleaning products. I'm sure you've all probably seen one of these before. You 
had a roommate in college that was not well versed in cleaning. Um, you've probably had one of these sitting around in your apartment or your dorm room and it's gotten nasty and smells really bad and may have some um, really bad memories for you. But these are great cleaning tools. So it's just a double sided cleaning sponge. And the purpose of it is to scour off dirt, grease, or particulate matter. So it's got two different sides to it. It's got a coarse abrasive side with steel wool, um, or a coarse abrasive side would be an example of like steel wool or if you use sandpaper. Um, and then a finer abrasive would be like a sponge scrubber or mesh. So, Um, abrasives are used to rub off particulate matter on a surface. They can be coarse, again, like that steel wool, or much finer, like a mesh or nylon scrubber. The decision of which to use is based on how much elbow grease you need to exert and the type of surfaces that you're cleaning. So you shouldn't use a coarse abrasive on a nonstick or stainless steel surface that could scratch easily. So just be aware, be aware of what it is that you are cleaning. Abrasive cleaners are designed to, relative, to remove relatively heavy amounts of soil, often found in small areas. They come in powder and liquid form and contain a kind of built-in elbow grease, which helps cut down the hard scrubbing required to remove soil. Scouring pads are also included in this category. Overuse over time can wear down the protective coating or glaze from surfaces. So again, just be careful what it is that you're cleaning um, and know the appropriate type of product to use with it. Okay, next slide. Right, so our, our next category of cleaning products is going to be um, alkalis. So to clean oily dirt or grease, you need an alkali. And these are soluble salts. Alkalis have a high pH which means that they're basic versus the low pH that are found in acids. For example, hand soap has a high level of alkalis. The alkalis break down the fatty oils and grease into a component that can be more easily removed from the surface. Safer or greener choices are baking soda and borax. So if you've never seen borax before, it actually comes in a container that looks like this and can be found at pretty much any grocery store. I'm um, pretty sure this one came from Walmart. But it's a, um, a much bigger example of one of those alkalis that you can use to clean with. Baking soda, which I'm sure that you've seen either stuck in your refrigerator before, and you may not have been sure why it's there. Your grandma just might have stuck it in there, and that's you've known your entire life that baking soda just goes in the refrigerator. But it's because it's a mild alkali that is low cost and easily found in the grocery store. It's good for removing smells from the refrigerator. So that's why grandma always put it in there or your garbage disposal and can be used to shine your faucets, showers and sinks. If you need something a little stronger, use borax. It's found in the laundry aisle of the grocery store. Like I said, this is your borax. And it's a good all purpose cleaner. So if you do need something that is even stronger, there's still a good alternative to using commercial products, which is a washing soda. This container is really heavy. But anytime that you're using this, um, it does work well on tough stains and floors and on hard surfaces, but you should protect yourself from the dust. So these are kind of particulate, um, meaning that if you were to pour it out, it would be a little dusty. And if you do have, again, some respiratory issues, some allergies, some asthma, um, you just want to wear a mask at this time if you can find one. Um, but wear a mask when you're cleaning, but always, always, always work in a well-ventilated area. Um, if you do have a sensitivity to powdery products you may want to use, you definitely want to use that mask um, so as not to inhale the dust particles. But borax, if you're not familiar with that, it's a natural mineral. Um, in recent years, there has been some concerns in the green cleaning community about using it to make cleaning products. Some studies have shown that chronic exposure to it, meaning a lot of exposure over a long period of time, 
Two borax could have reproductive system impacts. Um, also, there are some concerns about the respiratory effects. Again, most important thing is to mix it in a well ventilated area, or you can always use baking soda or washing soda. Okay, next slide, please. All right. Grab this one out of my bucket. So when using cleaning products, acids help break down difficult stains like rust or mineral deposits. The pH scale indicates that the acidity of a substance, the pH scale indicates the acidity of a substance. So again, when we were talking about basics earlier versus acids, water is considered under neutral. So 7.0 is your neutral level. A lower pH is considered acidic and higher pH is basic or alkaline. Your acids are normally sour or bitter, so like lemon juice, and they help to remove difficult stains such as rust or mineral deposits. Toilet bowl cleaners, tub and tile cleaners, and mold removers are typically acidic. So if you've got hard water in your home, I do, meaning that you get those water spots um, maybe on your sink or on your counters. Acids work really well at removing stains and discolorations caused by mineral deposits. So some good green cleaning choices are white vinegar. So like this, white vinegar or lemon juice. White vinegar is a good all purpose cleaner for all types of surfaces. So again, going back to my grandma, she has always used white vinegar to clean pretty much anything. So it's good all purpose cleaner, typically safe for majority types of surfaces, is one of the best products that you can use for cleaning. But what a lot of people don't know is there are two types of vinegar. And I'm not talking about white versus apple. Um, I mean, one that's made especially for cleaning and one that is food grade. So this is an example of a food grade vinegar. That may be what you have on hand um, in your cupboard and that'll work fine. But if you're wanting to purchase vinegar that is solely for cleaning purposes, cleaning vinegar is 20% stronger than food grade and sometimes it's actually less expensive. Now, if you've ever heard of cleaning with lemon juice, it is a bit more expensive, but it does smell great and works on lots of metals. It's not recommended for cleaning silver though. It does a good job on copper and brass when mixed with salt and cornstarch. If you have a sensitivity to lemon oil, as with any cleaning product, wear gloves, provide adequate ventilation, um, and you should be okay. Okay, next slide, please. So the last basic cleaning ingredients are surfactants. These are products that grab hold of the dirt and take it away from the item that is being cleaned. So you can find surfactants in soaps and detergents. Many are petroleum based, therefore they would not be considered green or necessarily environment, environmentally friendly products though. Uh, but you can find some commercially made environmentally friendly products and homemade cleaning products that do contain vegetable or vegetable oil or coconut oil instead of petroleum. Um, an example of this would be Murphy's vegetable oil or Castile soap. Um, if you've ever heard of the brand Dr. Bronner's? That's what it is. It's a vegetable oil based soap um, versus using petroleum. So petroleum can be a skin irritant. Um, just using a plant-based surfactant can be simple or easier on your skin. And again, more environmentally friendly. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so disinfectants are products that kill microorganisms on surfaces such as countertops. So the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, requires that your household cleaners make, that make claims about the germ killing properties of the product meet the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodent Act standards. 
The most important thing here to remember is that the contact time is the amount of time the solution is in contact with the surface. So it really depends on what the product is that you're using, but it's really important that you pay attention to how long it says to leave it on the surface. So if you just essentially put a disinfectant, spray it down on your counter, and then wipe it off right away, you're not really doing anything. So in order for these disinfectants to work the way that they're intended, they have to be left on the surface for the recommended contact time. Again, generally around five to 10 minutes, but depends on the, co the compound that you're using. So pay attention to that. So what I mean by requires household cleaners that make claims about the germ killing properties, um, that just means that if a product says it kills 99% of bacteria, um, it has to meet those FERPA or the, um, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act standards. So and more information about that can be found on the EPA website, and that's epa.gov. Okay, and Becca, you can switch to the next slide. So let's talk about bleach. So chlorine bleach, which is commonly referred to as household bleach, um, is used in that it can actually cause severe damage and irritation to your eyes, skin, and respiratory system. So if growing up, your mama kept the bleach away from you, that was with good reason. Um, it can be really harsh on your skin, it can be really, really dangerous. If you don't know what you're using, um, if you're not using it in a well-ventilated area, or if it has contact um, with your eyes, or if it's ingested. So, there are good alternatives to chlorine bleach. The non-chlorine products or oxygen bleaches usually contain hydrogen peroxide, sodium perborate, or so sodium percarbonate. So the eco-friendly disinfectants can be used at home but should not be used in facilities that are used for childcare or commercial food preparation. So if you choose to use it in your own personal home, an eco-friendly version or a homemade version, that is fine. But you cannot use that in a facility that is used as a child care center or that is used for commercial food preparation. So those have to be used, um, the commercial cleaners have to be used in those environments. Again, for more information on that and those EPA requirements, you can go to epa.gov. Okay. Some eco-friendly versions uh, would be pine oil, hydrogen peroxide, thyme oil, um, and there's actually, we have information for you on our Healthy Housing website um, with the University of Georgia. So what we can do is we'll give you the information for finding those resources later um, for some more eco-friendly versions instead of using bleach. So these are just some examples. You see Borax here, we've already looked at that. Um, seventh Generation is a brand that is commonly found in grocery stores, it's known for um, being a more eco-friendly version. It can get a little pricey, so um, if you feel the need to buy something rather than making it at home, um, that's one brand that you can look at. Um, using Fels Naphtha, actually I have a bar of Fels Naphtha. I think it's like 97 cents. So, and this has lots of different uses, um, uses for laundry. And so again, you'll have access to some recipe cards that will show you how to use this. So again, 97 cents. And then that picture of the Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap, that's just an example of one of those plant-based um, soaps that we were talking about earlier. Okay, next slide. So it's important to understand the difference in cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfectant. Because yes, there is a difference. Cleaning removes the dirt and grime. So this is where your elbow grease comes in, right? So you are physically using some type of elbow, elbow grease to remove the dirt and the grime. So it's like when you're washing your hands. You are putting your hands together, you're using warm water and soap, and you are physically activating those compounds so that way you can get the dirt and grime off. 
And then after the surface is cleaned, then you sanitize. So sanitizer works best on clean surfaces, which is why it's really important, especially during this time, to know that washing your hands first and then sanitizing is the prime prime way to go um, during coronavirus and it, during any time you're washing your hands. So same thing when you're cleaning surfaces. With regards to child care learning centers, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends using a solution of household liquid chlorine bleach in water to sanitize and disinfect most items and surfaces. Sanitizing and disinfecting can also take place in a dishwasher or a clothes dryer. So to sanitize and disinfect, you can mix chlorine bleach in water, follow the manufacturer's instructions for the appropriate amount to use, and then leave the solution on the surface for at least two minutes. Beware of purchasing products at low cost or dollar stores. So you may go to your local dollar store and find a bottle that says bleach, but if the manufacturer doesn't make any claims about it disinfecting or sanitizing, and they do not have to tell you, the consumer, how much of the active ingredient is in the product. So you may be purchasing very, very, very watered down bleach. So make sure that you look and if it says on there, kills 99.9% .9 of germs, then you have to look and see in the ingredients list how much of the product, bleach essentially, is in there. Because if, it, but if it doesn't say it kills any type of germs or doesn't, does it make a claim like that? Then they don't have to, to tell you how much of the product is in there. So you don't have to know how much bleach is in there. So just be wary of purchasing from low cost or dollar stores or really anywhere that doesn't make a claim. Um, but then again, that disinfecting helps to eliminate or inactivate germs. So you're removing them, reducing them, and then essentially eliminating or inactivating them. Okay, next slide please. So it's important to know that there's really no standard definition for the term green. It doesn't always mean that the product maybe uses less harmful chemicals or that it's safer for the environment. It's up to you to protect yourself from being misled by false claims. So the term green can really be used as a marketing tool. Um, this means that you should not believe everything that you hear in an advertisement. So try it for yourself. Research, um, research your product, find out what it's really made out of and how it's manufactured. Most of these words are meaningless or have very little meaning with regards to household cleaning products. So if you look for words like non-toxic, natural, green, environmentally friendly, biodegradable, biocompatible. So really you need to know what those words mean as far as what you're buying um, and if it's really worth it. So one of the best ways to select a green product is to look for a third party certification. And what that means is the most widely used certification in the United States is the green seal. So you'll see up here at the top um, with the little check mark, the green seal. This is an independent nonprofit organization that certifies products using credible science-based and transparent standards. Also the EPA safer choice label is a good option too. So household cleaning products are not required to disclose their ingredients except for disinfectants or other ingredients considered to be antimicrobial pesticides. So if it has a claim like kills germs on kitchen, children, and recreational products, it's not really meaningful. In fact, such claims are not even permitted. So if you see something like this that says kills germs on any type of kitchen, children, and recreational products, you can contact the EPA or the Federal Trade Commission. Um, if there's any claims on like sponges, toilet seats, toys, or any other treated articles. So other options are safer choice. That's, it meets the EPA safer product standards, cradle to cradle. Um, and if you look on, again, the resources that we'll provide for you at the end of this, um, or that Becca will include later, there will be some places where you can look for more information on these seals. Okay, next slide. Okay, so saving money is our last green tip. 
Your homemade cleaning products cost less than commercial or over-the-counter cleaners. But there are some safety tips for making household cleaning products that include always mixing your ingredients in a well-ventilated area, never mix ammonia and bleach, always label and date the products that you make, store ingredients like essential oils out of the reach of children, exposure and ingestion of these oils can be toxic, mix only what you need or no more than a month's supply. You really don't want it sitting around. So mix what you're going to need at the time um, or if you're going to use it within a month, that's fine too. Always use new containers. So don't put it especially in a container that was previously used for food um, or that had previously contained a different chemical. Um, there could be some unknown reactions amongst that. So always use new containers. Um, again, never reuse those food containers for household cleaners. Just think about a child maybe that might not know that there's a cleaner um, and it could potentially look like something that they could eat and they may associate that food container with something that's safe. Um, so always label with the date, what ingredients you put in it and your product name. Again, just to reiterate, mix it in a well-ventilated well area and then out of the reach of the children and pets. Okay, next slide. So this is just a, a general breakdown of what it looks like to purchase your cleaning products to make your own green cleaning products at home. So these are essentially the ingredients. Um, so that big container of borax um, is 64 ounces. So it costs $4.47. Um, it's about seven cents per ounce. Arm and Hammer washing soda. So that was this big container here. That's 55 ounces, costs three dollars and ninety-seven cents. Your Phil's naphtha, again, ninety-seven cents. Um, these are some of your that Dr. Bronner's Murphy's oil. Um, those are going to be your plant-based soaps. And then if you look here where it says Great Value Distilled White Vinegar, that was that container that I had. So that's your cooking grade, your food grade vinegar. So that's going to be about $2.48 versus um, top job cleaning vinegar. So you get 64 ounces, which is obviously less than the bigger container, but it's 20% stronger um, than your food grade vinegar. Okay, and next slide, please. And then this is just some common household products. Um, Windex is just a name brand, so it's for like a name brand glass cleaner. For 32 ounces, $3.48. A Lysol all-purpose cleaner spray, $2.47. A furniture polish, a toilet bowl cleaner. Again, these are all different products that could very easily make up your cleaning cabinet. Um, but using your recipe book here, those ingredients, that we're get that we just went over. Um, we're going to look at some different ways that you can combine those and actually make all these products, or and then some different ones. So you can use those basic ingredients, make your own cleaning products, and save yourself some money. Okay, that is all I have for you today. So now I'm going to turn it over to Becca, and she's going to talk about some poison lookalikes. I am. So we, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so it will switch to a video and y'all are going to see um, some different poison lookalikes. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, so we are going to talk about what poison lookalikes and why are poison lookalikes even important. Um, and this is because we have chemicals that are just lurking in our houses that can very easily become something that's dangerous to the children that are in our houses. And so I'm going to talk to you about that, and then I will share some of the resources with you. Um, if you go to the UGA Facebook page, there are also um, the Chris County page. 
there are two blog posts that were posted in the last two days about healthy cleaning, healthy homes, and poison lookalikes. So that's on the UGA extension blog post. Um, and so that will, that kind of puts all of the resources from what Ashley talks about and what Kashan talks about all in one box for you. So we are going to talk about what some things look like and look alike. And I want you to think about it. And if you can tell me which one is which, tell me. If you can't, then think about it. Because if you can't tell the difference, can the kids that you're around tell the difference? So we're going to start with one of the things that Ashley talked to y'all about earlier. So we're going to talk about these. These are pods that we either see in our dishwashers or in our washing machines. But they are one of those things that very easily and quickly look like something that could be eaten. Now, they do have that cleaning smell to it, but that doesn't mean that a toddler is going to know what to do with that cleaning smell. Um, and so that it's just really important to think about those things um, as we all look at so we're going to look at them in two different ways. Uh, I got two different ways that my Poison Lookalike kit is designed. So we're going to look. And if you look here, one of these items is Sweet Tarts. One of these items is Tums. And Tums aren't necessarily bad for us, but if a child was to get a hold of it and eat a whole bottle, we may find a problem. So which one do y'all think is which? Before I tell you, I want you to look at them in a different format and it'll help you think a little bit differently about it. Think about them like this. So if you got a baby or a toddler, what are they thinking when they see that poison look alike? So I'm gonna hold them on the same side that our other cups were in. So which one of these is which? Um, it's hard to tell sometimes, isn't it? So let's go back to that first one I showed you. So these are our sweet tarts and these are our Tums. But y'all have an even more disadvantage via the video. You can't see the labeling on them. And so they really do look a whole lot more alike. Um, so let's look at another one. Now this is one that a lot of people have in their fridge, but it looks very similar to this, doesn't it? So, we got two right here. One is a cheese, one is sand. So we may not wanna put the sand in our mouth, but we will wanna use the cheese. Which one do you think switch? This is our cheese, this is our Parmesan cheese, and that's our sand. So what's important to think about is it lurks everywhere. The poisons lurk in our medicine cabinets. They lurk under our sinks. And here's a big one. This one. So I only have one bottle of this, and I'll tell you why in a second. But this one, if you think about it for a minute, what does it look like for you? It is pine salt in this bottle. But it looks exactly like apple juice that a lot of our kids consume. And so you want to be aware of it because it only the smell gives it away. That doesn't mean that a little one is going to know or an animal or a pet is going to know the difference. Here's another one for you. A lot of us have one sitting in our refrigerator and one sitting on our kitchen cabinets to do dishes. Can you tell me which one is which? So if you think that my left one is the dish detergent and my right one is the Gatorade, Powerade. So they very easily can look like Windex or um, Dawn or dish detergent. So it's very important to keep those things in mind. Um, even things that are good for us like this one. This one is vitamin gummies versus regular gummies, which regular gummies, we got other things we gotta look at like our hidden sugars. But our vitamin gummies, if our kids get a hold of those, they still have that fruity smell and they're going to give them a little bit more. They just don't need to take a whole bottle of them. Whereas you can eat a whole bag of gummies 
and you might just feel sick later on. Let me give you a few more. This one's a little bit more difficult to see because it kind of got melted. Chocolate doesn't sit well in a car. But one of them is a laxative and one of them is Hershey's. So if you look at the bars, and I have a really good image that shows you this, but if you look at the bars, then they look the exact same, don't they? So it's just important when you are thinking about what's in your house, what's in your purse, what's in your bags, what's in medicine bags, what's laying around your house, what's in cabinets and kitchens and under cabinets. We keep things at very low levels sometimes. It's important to know that those very quickly, like these, can become a poison. And so what do you do with a poison if you have a poison problem? So let me just show you real quick um, some resources for you. So the this is one of those more look-alikes that kind of gives you that those labels of what look-alikes, common household things, medicines look exactly like. Um, but this is also mistaken identity. If we have trouble telling something apart when it's not in its labels, then you know that a kid is going to. Um, but if you click, you can also find more in detailed poison lookalike information. And so that is, we've got, so to prevent accidents or poisoning of all ages, it's important for you to think about these things. We often don't necessarily think about it until we're just dealing with really small children and sometimes we still miss it. So it's important for you as the guardian, parent, babysitter, whatever you are to the younger child to be aware of what the poisons can look like and to know what number to call if you have a problem. So um, if you do end up with a child that consumes a whole box of Sudafed, then you need to be aware and call 1-800-222 one, two, 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 um, for their poison look like for the poison help control line. And if it's a real big problem, then you're going to have to go to the ER and see what comes from there of getting some help. Um, so that is one of the two blog posts that's going to give you some resources to the poison look alike information. And then some of the information that Ashley covered is going to be on the Healthy Homes Through a Balanced Life blog post. And so that's gonna give you the links to some of what Ashley talked about and then a little bit of what you're gonna hear from Kashan in just a minute. So let me get us back to our PowerPoint. Make it advance. So what are those hazards that are lurking in your household, those look-alikes that might very easily become a bad one for the people in your house. So I'm gonna leave you thinking on this one, and I'll tell you at the end which one was which. So I want you to think, is my left one water or is it rubbing alcohol? So which one is my left one? Is this one the poison or is it the one that's okay to drink. So, stay tuned to find out. You can also go, EPA's got some great resources for you to be able to search and find choices and standards to be able to meet them. And then there are eight ways that you can make your overall household healthy. So, you want to keep it clean, which is what we talked about this whole time. You want to keep it contaminant free, maintain things. If you keep up with things as they break or leaks or things like that, if you maintain them, you're going to have better results on maintaining your house as a healthy house. And then try to keep it pest free. So don't leave food laying around that's going to create those critters into your house. And then you want to keep it dry. You want to have good ventilation like what Ashley was talking about. You don't want to be mixing chemicals or using chemicals in small confined areas that don't have any ventilation. And then make sure that you keep your home safe. And then you can go green if you make sure that you follow some of these guidelines and make sure that you're disinfecting your households, especially now when we're really needing to disinfect and make sure there's nothing 
um, working on our countertops. So with that, we are going to share it over to Kishan for our make and take activity. And your recipes are on that blog post and then um, they're also on the event page. So, and then if you need them, we'll share our contact at the end. So Kishan, are you still with us and it's your turn? I am, I sure am. Okay, so we want to make sure that we know how to make our green cleaning products. Can anybody tell me the first step in using a disinfectant? Because we're talking a lot about disinfectant because of COVID-19. Very good. The first step is it must be on a clean product. So if I have a dirty countertop, for instance, and I'm thinking I want to disinfect or sanitize and I just use a Clorox wipe, if you look at the instructions, that's why instructions are so important. If you look at the instructions on our disinfectant, even the bleach that we may use to disinfect or sanitize, it clearly states that it should be on a clean surface. So this is the first step to our sanitizer slash disinfectant. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make what we call a fragrant kitchen cleanser. And the recipe calls for it, as Becca stated, the recipes are on the blog post for Crisp County Extension. It calls for two pints of water, and we know that two pints is four cups, so we're going to split this in half because I made some just last week. It also calls for four drops of essential oils. And I like to use the citrus ones for the kitchen. So since it calls for four, we're cutting the recipe in half. So we're gonna do one lemon. And if you really wanna add a little razzle dazzle to it, I like to mix them, the orange as well as the lemon. So you mix those two together. You combine the ingredients. And make sure you combine it really well. Oh, it smells so fragrant. It smells just like a nice citrus clean kitchen. Now for this portion, I'm gonna give you a little trick. It's easier just to pour it back into the measuring cup once you mix it together. And this is a two cup measuring cup. And I have these cute little bottles that you can purchase at a dollar store. And in fact, it's a travel bottle that I actually got at a regular box store like Walmart and you pour it into your container whoops don't do like I did and pour too much in there you pour it in there and voila now as Ashley stated we need to make sure that we have our labels so we have our label and it has the name of our cleaner it also has the ingredients, vinegar, because once I put this under my sink, and I told you guys earlier that I have three children, so once I put it under the sink, are my teenagers going to make sure that they grab the right thing? You're absolutely right. They will not. They're going to grab whichever one they see first, but if I have a label on it, then I know what it is when I go to grab it, and also after we want to make sure that we only keep it for about 30 days of course this will be exhausted probably by tomorrow this time because it's such a small amount but i have the rest that's still in my cup and it smells excellent so we're going to make another one also and this one is called all-purpose cleaner so again we stated that the first thing you must do is start with a clean surface if you're disinfecting or sanitizing so again, it calls for two cups of water, three tablespoons of white vinegar, one, two, and three, and a half a teaspoon of an oil-based soap, and I like Murphy's, that's what I use because it's all-purpose, and it is a oil-based or plant-based soap. So all of these things are not hazardous chemicals. So a half a teaspoon of the vegetable oil-based liquid soap, and then a half a teaspoon of 
washing soda. And washing soda can be found on the laundry aisle in most of your grocery stores or box department stores like Walmart or something like that. And it's a great laundry booster to my moms who are have stains. My son played football for several years and that was the only thing that helped my laundry detergent to get those stains out. And you want to make sure that you mix everything together really well because oil and water generally don't mix. And sometimes I use a fork to kind of make sure that I break it up, all the washing soda, and it gets incorporated really well. Again, I want to make sure that I pour it back into my measuring cup because it'll be a lot easier to pour into that little bottle. But for this one, since it's an all-purpose cleaner, Dollar Tree bottle, and I can pour it right into here. And the good thing about all-purpose cleaners are they are gentle enough to use on several different surfaces, but they are effective enough to clean those surfaces. And you put it on there, put the lid on there. And the final step, as always, is to put a what? A label on it so that I will know what it is. And so I have a prepared label. And I put it on there and voila, I have a great AP cleaner that can be used in several rooms in the house. And also we talked earlier about saving money. It saves tons of money so that you don't have to buy a separate cleaner for each room, a bathroom cleaner, a kitchen cleaner. This all-purpose cleaner is wonderful for a variety of different cleaning. So I hope that you've enjoyed the demo and I hope that you go out. All of these things are things that you probably already have around your home. And again, if you suffer from allergies like myself and two of my family members, it's a great way to cut down on those chemicals used in the home for cleaning. Thank you so much, Ms. Becca. So thank you both for joining us. So that was Kishan Thomas and she is from Bibb County and so she is the family and consumer science agent there. And then Ashley was the um, first presentation you had and she was the, she is the Thomas County family and consumer science county agent. Um, so remember those lookalikes that I left you with? This one was your water. So very easily, just rubbing alcohol and water look alike. So I hope that you enjoyed the green cleaning. Hope that it started connected for you since we had lovely weather for it. Um, if you will make sure that there are two surveys that are attached to the top um, that are in the descriptions or if you can't find the descriptions, if you will email me and my email is Rebecca, which is R-E-B-E-C-C-A, period stackhouse which is s-t-a-c-k-h-o-u-s-e at u-g-a dot e-d-u then i will send you the links to those um and that will be great so um if you need kishan or ashley's or you are in a different county and you joined us in watching um our green cleaning tonight then reach out and let you know um Kishan and Ashley, you want to give y'all's emails? Because I don't know them off the top of my head. They generally populate for me. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So mine is A as in Ashley, E, C. <laughs> I forget how weird mine is. A E C 10754 at uga.edu. Or you can go to the Thomas County Extension website and look at Family and Consumer Sciences and you can find it there. And mine is KJ at uga.edu. And you can also visit our Bibb County Extension Facebook page. So you can get up with us in any ways. Even though your county extension offices are looking a little different, you can still get up with us. Um, we're available, our emails, um, phone numbers, things like that. So just reach out and we are happy to help. We are happy to give you more information. Um, the, you can go to the UGA Extension Chris County blog for the facts agent and you can find all the resources from everything we talked about tonight between 
The Healthy Homes is a Balanced Life, and The Poison Lookalikes. Those two are going to give you all of the handouts and the resources that we talked about tonight. It'll also give you the recipes, both recipes that Kashan made for us. But that recipe book has, what, 10 or 15 different recipes for different cleaning, and they all use those same basic ingredients. Um, so thank you for joining. And they are excellent recipes. Say that one more time. They're excellent. They're excellent recipes, like the wood. I have hardwoods in my home, and the wood floor cleaner is excellent. The um, Instead of buying Windex, for instance, the glass cleaner is very good. And a lot of them use vinegar, and that will help to absorb odors as well. So they're good ones. I use them at home too. I think Ashley uses them some too. So a lot of us do use them. Um, Mary, you got anything else you want to add before we close out? Um, I just would like to thank you all for doing this program. Um, and we will keep this on the library page so we can have the information and the links that you mentioned in the video as well. And I do too use the green cleaning products um, that you did up at a program previously and I do love them. So they, they, they really are wonderful products and I recommend that everyone actually watches the video and, and, and get the recipes for the products. So the one thing I'll add is the next, uh, we're gonna do another Zoom with Mary and we're gonna have another fax agent join us and we're gonna be talking about movement and exercise. So that one will be on May 14th and it will be at five o'clock as well. And then the one that Ashley and I did two weeks ago on mindful eating, you can still find it if you look hard for past events and I'll see if I can get it to post on our Facebook page. Um, so thank you for joining us and I hope that you enjoyed it. All right, goodbye.